Today in the news, we got some Raptor Lake Take the L from Intel and all of this CES info. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with Intel. The company did pretty well with their latest CPU releases. The 12900K with its eight performance and eight efficient cores does what it's supposed to do for the company. It beats the competition. And the lower end offerings like the 12600K gives you a pretty good bang for the buck. Now, sure, the lineup needs a little more polish, like even lower end CPUs and motherboards that don't cost 200 bucks. But at least in terms of performance, it's there. And with that success, the company will take this architecture, which uses a mix of performance and efficient cores, and double down on it for its Raptor Lake 13th generation. In this generation, Intel will double the efficient cores. So it will be eight performance and 16 efficient cores. And guess what? We just got the first benchmark for that generation. This was found by Komachi and Saka over on Twitter. And while the model is unknown, we can tell it's a next generation CPU. The benchmark in question is from BAP Co's Crossmark software, and it shows the CPU as genuine Intel 0000. But if we look at the specifications in the system area, we can read RPLS for Raptor Lake S. And a little bit lower, we see that it has 24 cores and 32 logical processors, essentially 24 cores and 32 threads, just like what we expect from Raptor Lake. So how did it perform? Well, really bad, at least compared to its flagship friends. If we look at the overall score section, it scores 1,591 points. That's pretty close to the 5950X, which scores 1,694 points. But if we look at Alder Lake, well, the older 12th gen flagship is almost 50% faster at 2,376 points. Ouch. This trend, where the uh, old generations beat the new one, follows pretty much on all of the benchmarks. Here is the productivity one, for example. Heck, the uh, 5950X takes an even bigger lead here. Then there's the creativity benchmarks, where the uh, Raptor Lake CPU actually beats the 5950X. But once again, it gets devoured by the 12900K. And lastly, we got the responsiveness benchmark, where we once again see a Raptor Lake get crushed by both. Now, this is embarrassing, but also pretty normal. I mean, engineering samples at the beginning are always clocked super low. And as we get closer and closer to the release date, things will tend to just get better and better. But for now, it's bad. And as is, Raptor Lake should land in late 2022 with the same socket compatibility as Alder Lake. And it should, and that's a big should, be a heck of a lot more efficient this time around. Let's just hope that the uh, next leaks will show better performance. And now for some quick news, let's talk CES. It's coming pretty soon, and we're starting to get some dates for the uh, press conferences. Intel, for example, will have its presentation on January 4th, specifically at 10 a.m. Pacific or 1 p.m. Eastern time. During that presentation, we're expected to hear anything from Alder Lake for laptops to the lower end SKUs for desktop CPUs. And hopefully we'll see uh, what their ARC GPUs have in stores for us. Then we have a AMD. And while it's not actually a CES presentation, uh, AMD will have its event on the same day. That's on January 4th, a couple of hours before Intel's event. So at 7 a.m. Pacific or 10 a.m. Eastern. As for the subject of the conference, well, AMD didn't leave much to the imagination. During their five years of Ryzen video, we heard that uh, Zen 3D vCache would be showcased, and we also heard about Zen 4. So we'll probably have a glimpse into that 
that architecture too. We also know that their more affordable GPUs are supposed to be released early next year, so they are likely to talk about that too. And lastly, there's Nvidia. Now, as usual, the company will follow up on AMD's time slot. And unlike last year, where it was Jeff Fisher hosting the SVP of the company, this CES show will be hosted by none other than the CEO, Jensen himself. They call it an executive keynote for some reason. Not sure why it's called that, but we can expect a pretty long event that touches on gaming, robotics, self-driving, and other things. In that gaming segment, we expect to see all of those RTX 3000 series refreshes that we've heard about, like the 3090 Ti, the 3060 Super, and possibly the upgraded RTX 3080 with an extra two gigabytes of VRAM. So what are you guys most excited about for CES? Let me know down below. And it's been a while, so let's do the free game check. If you go to the Epic Store right now, you can get Dead by Daylight for free. It's an asymmetrical multiplayer action horror game. Basically, it's one Jason Voorhees versus four poor humans. So you have to hide to escape before he catches you, or you have to catch all four of the uh, SKPs. It's almost like Evolve, except that this game isn't dead yet. It was already a steal on the Steam Store, Store for 11 Canadian rubles, but it's even better when it's free. There's also Wild True colon, Learn, which is free on the Epic Store, and basically it's a game about trying to talk with your cat. I'm, I'm not kidding, I'm just as confused as you. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one and hopefully with a shaved beard. Take care.